Matt Damon found himself caught up in a hoax bomb scare on Saturday evening while holidaying in Mykonos with his wife Luciana Barroso. The Mykonos Police Subdirectorate took immediate action after receiving an anonymous email at 11 p.m., falsely claiming explosive devices had been placed in four beach bars across the Greek island, a popular tourist destination. With an estimated 4,000 revelers enjoying a night out on Saturday, bar owners were urged to lower music levels and guide patrons to the exits in a calm and orderly manner. Damon, who has spent the last week in Mykonos with his family, was among those in the third targeted venue as they were promptly evacuated. In social media content filmed at the scene, the actor appeared calm and amenable as he followed instructions and made his way outside. In the Paranga area, where two of the four beach bars were located, as many as 4,000 tourists were out when the evacuations took place. The subsequent demand for vehicles as customers left the scene sparked traffic jams on at least half of the island's roads. Describing the scene, one bar owner told a Greek news outlet, Upon receiving notification from the police, we promptly reduced the music and calmly guided our guests to safety. It was a challenging situation, but we managed to maintain order. It was later confirmed by the local police that the threat was a hoax. Anita faces a severe injury as she suffers pain like never before. The 31-year-old Brazilian singer Anita suffered a series of nasty injuries to her face and body when she was stung by a jellyfish while swimming. She reportedly experienced an excruciating sting as she described it by saying, a pain like I've never felt before after being stung in a cave in Ibiza, Spain. Anita was exploring the island while taking a break from her European tour over the weekend. In an Instagram update, she showed the red marks the jelly fish had left on the right side of her chin and her forearm in a video. She told her followers, a jellyfish attacked me and I fought with it. I'm fine now. But at the time, it was intense. It was a pain like I've never felt before. I was literally electrocuted. The singer added, I burnt myself all over while punching it. It was an experience like no other. A news outlet reported that a man at the scene helped the award-winning musician shortly after the sea creature stung her. Anita said, the sailor removed the venom from my skin with a knife. He scraped it off and the venom came out brown. I was laughing and screaming, a mix of emotions. After experiencing pain like that, I feel like I can handle anything. Recalling the moment she was stung, Anita explained, I could feel it coming at my face, at my mouth. My mouth instantly swelled up. She didn't seek medical help, telling her fans, everything is fine. It was excruciating pain for about an hour. It was bizarre. Anita took to stories on Friday to show how her chin wound was still visible, albeit much faded. She jokingly asked, can any of the 728 million 371,918 jellyfish experts tell me if this scar will be permanent? This is not the first time the singer experienced severe health issues, though. It comes after she sat down for an interview with today's May Digital cover star and opened up about her past health struggles. Back in 2022, the hitmaker was hospitalized for months as she battled an unknown illness that eventually subsided. The mystery condition left her unable to walk, and she admitted she thought she was going to die during the ordeal. I was super, super unhappy healthy, she recalled. I got really sick and was so physically ill I couldn't work, and I hadn't stopped working in so many years. She noted that the experience was a big wake-up call as she realized that she physically couldn't do many things that I loved doing because of my health. I had to take time to take care of myself, she said. While working to improve the state of her health, she felt inspired to make music. I just wasted so much time of my life trying to reach goals and please people and be a success, she told Today. The songstress, born Larissa de Macedo Machado, said the illness changed my whole mentality, and that's why I made this album. Anita noted, I made Funk Generation in the hospital. I was like, I want an album like this. In case I die, I'm going to leave an album that I'm proud of. And that's exactly what she did. I'm really proud of this album, and I didn't do it thinking about streams and algorithms and numbers. I thought just about having fun and loving what I did, she gushed. Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively will never stop serving couple goals. Ryan Reynolds finally took a break from promoting his new film Deadpool and Wolverine to share a photo with his lovely wife, Blake Lively, on Instagram Saturday, giving us the couple content we missed. The 47-year-old actor used the app Stories feature to upload a close-up selfie with the actress, 36. He wore round, dark brown eyeglasses, a dark baseball cap, and a dark t-shirt, sporting a very light beard. Lively, who he wed in 2012, wore a red and white halter neck top as she nestled her head in her husband's neck. She reposted the photo on her Instagram account and joked, stop missing me on your press tour. Get out there and hustle, boy, she clarified, which is girl code for don't you ever stop missing me for a second. It comes after earlier 
earlier this week, the silver screen siren poked fun at the teal suit her husband wore to a promotional event for his upcoming movie. Ryan interacted with British fans as he brought out Peggy, dubbed Britain's ugliest dog, for a Deadpool and Wolverine UK fan event at the Eventum Apollo. He said the small canine was also known as Mary Puppins, aka Dogpool. Afterward, Lively shared a clip of her spouse with Peggy on social media, along with a playful message. SOS, he's trying to get me pregnant again, she wrote over a video, adding, put the dog that you find adorable in spite of societal canine expectations away and take off that damn teal suit. Rude. Glenn Powell vows to finish his college degree. Actor Glenn Powell is determined to complete his bachelor's degree in Spanish and early American history at the University of Texas, even though he'll be in London this fall, shooting Edgar Wright's remake of The Running Man for Paramount Pictures. I'm not going to be sitting in a class with other students on the regular. I'm basically going to be coming back because I have to finish up, the 35-year-old SAG Award winner told a news outlet on Tuesday. So they're letting me figure it out with distance learning, and I'm obviously going to be coming in, zooming in for classes and whatnot. But I have to be back for the proctored exams, so we're figuring that out two or three times a semester. I'll come back for all my stuff. Edgar has been very nice about letting me finish my degree in the middle of his massive movie. Glenn, who delivered the keynote address at UT's Moody College in 2023, originally majored in radio television film when he first enrolled at age 19, but he left Texas to pursue his acting career in Hollywood. Hollywood. Now, 15 years later, Powell sold his Hollywood Hills home and moved back to his native Austin, where he bought a home 30 minutes away from his parents, Glenn and Cindy Powell's ranch. In terms of people saying, oh, he moved back to Texas because he hates Hollywood, or Hollywood's fake, it's like, I love this town, defended the hitman writer producer star. The movie meant like so much to so many people, and you know, just getting to go shoot this thing in Oklahoma, and you know, Coming here for little chunks of time and doing all the stuff I need to do here, it's great. And I have nothing against Hollywood. I just realized, in terms of filling up the pieces of me that need to be refueled between projects and doing stuff like that, that's all Austin for me. What an interesting life choice. There you have it, people. The latest and juiciest news of Hollywood served to you hot. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to watch more such content. See you later.